leadership of the Institute and with BJ. Uh, we welcome you. And without further ado, we'll hand it over to uh, Anne Lambright. The biographies of our presenters are in the back of the sheet. Good afternoon. It's really great to see such a huge turnout. Since we don't have much time, I've been instructed by DJ um, just to, again, point you to the biographies, which means that I don't get to show everything, all the scary things you can find out about people by Google. Um, so, but I will say that um, the point of these workshops is to take a topic and kind of come at it from different angles. So we've got uh, three uh, different... Um, uh, types of expertise or, or ways of, of looking at weird noises and beautiful sounds here. Uh, Vivek Bald, who is a documentary filmmaker and um, a professor at MIT, and Mitch Poland. But well, I guess what I found interesting in my Googling is that these people aren't just one thing, but it's um, Vivek is a documentary filmmaker who is also a musician. Um, Mitch Poland uh, does theater, he writes, he does set design, um, directs, quite a um, multiple um, talent, a multi-talented um, uh, artist, and then uh, Dan Roman, who um, is a, a musician, composer, um, and I'm going to put in a plug here, uh, in these days you can hear one of his compositions. Um, Last sat Sunday, he presented at the Hart School of Music, Musica de Palladium and Passing Puntos. Uh, and you can see it again if you missed it at UConn this Sunday, correct? Okay. Uh, I co founded and ran a monthly club night in New York City called Mutiny, uh, where four other DJs and myself uh, produced and performed electronic dance music that mixed, mixed styles. Uh, such as hip hop, dub, jungle, drum and bass, um, along with uh, the sounds of South Asian film, folk, and classical music. I mean, I'm fairly sure VJ invited me to supply the weird, the weird noises. <laughs> We're talking about beautiful noises and uh, sound, and something that Cage was also very interested into was silence as part of the sound experience. Then I think, you know, if we explore a little bit of what uh, John Cage thought and what he did, maybe we can challenge our perceptions of what sound can be and music can be, and the perception of, you know, the environment maybe as a stage for music making. Now I'm going to play something else by John Cage, which is really more in depth in relation to his philosophy that has to do with improvisation and the nature of sound and all that. And this is actually, it's, it's a fairly hard piece, so I need to, like you said, to be heard. Okay, do you like it? <laughs> It's a live concert, it goes on for 45 minutes. But um, he's not looking simply to play back sounds for the audience, but he's looking to project his body into the audience, to really puncture the audience with the sound he's making and with his body to create uh, some sort of complete muscularity in the music space. For me, the Mutiny Club Night, which ran between 1997 and 2003, was intended as a political space. Um, I had grown up in the late 70s and 80s in the swirl of several amazing music scenes, punk, reggae, hip-hop, ska, um, that all flourished together, evolving, intertwining, and intermingling. I went to a lot of clubs over those years, and um, the clubs were not just spaces of music for me. 
they were the spaces of my first political communities as well as musical communities. Um, because what, what drew me and others to, together into those spaces uh, was both the energy and the vitality of the music itself um, and the politics and the social experiences to which the music was giving voice. So, I might have talked about too much, just wanted to get a sense of this, but that's the opening, opening text to Anson and Arturo's radio play, Twelve Done with the Judgment of God. It's a mix of uh, French text, along with Pascalalia, along with grunts, screams, gurgles, uh, the sound of his body being thrown about the room, the sound of himself throwing his own body against walls. <laughs> sound of classical music at all, right? But the idea is that then you can start improvising whatever you want, and basically what you have is a percussion ensemble. Specific, um, whose artist's name is Merzbau, Merzbo, if anyone is, a, is familiar with him. And um, I developed a relationship with him because I found out that he was very interested in um, the glass, the glasses that you would get from fast food restaurants that would have cartoon characters on them. And if you sent him one of these glasses, he would send you back a tape of noise. And so I thought this is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so, in the, in the, in the, so over the course of five years, I sent him you know, 20 to 25 glasses, and he sent me back 20 to 25 tapes. Well, as musicians, we have this perception, perception of music as something that has these qualities, and music is supposed to be beautiful, and music is supposed to move you, and music is supposed to have feeling and all that. And then John Cage is so oblique to that. Some of John Cage. So I try to smooth in the transition into what John Cage is by presenting to them something which is much more accessible. <laughs> 